This review has spoilers. Has spoilers. Apple TV is still trying to make its way into the mainstream of viewers' eyeballs with its smorgasbord of numerous TV shows and Apple-made movies. Tom Hanks is now on his second venture with them after the Greyhound in 2021's The Finch. Not without my team, we'd do this together. As far back as the 1990s, we've seen Tom Hanks been stranded on the other side of the moon in Apollo 13. We die by the clock. That's how long we have. In the early 2000s, we saw Tom Hanks stranded on the beach in Castaway. Stranded. It all happened so fast. There was a solar flare. Goodbye crops, food, goodbye everything. And now in 2021, Tom Hanks is now stranded in a camper van. And instead of a ball named Wilson as his companion, it's now a droid named Jack. I mean, Jeff. In this epic apocalyptic road trip set in a hostile world of solar flares that threaten to engulf the world in tornadoes and 500 mile an hour winds and impending doom, it's not quite the father and son camping trip most people expect. Come and see this. Finch is 116 minutes long and directed by Miguel Sapochnik, an English director of such television and films such as Game of Thrones, Repo Man, True Detective and House. All the life on Earth, vegetation, animals and plant life is devastated by lethal radiation. We first beat Finch, the last human survivor in St. Louis, Missouri. It's an arid sand swept place with its Disney's Wally type robot, Dewey. We find Finch in head to toe what looks like a spacesuit to protect from the burning UV rays and radiation from the sun. This environment somewhat is reminiscent of the opening scenes of the Disney movie Wally or I Am Legend with Will Smith, a world desolate of people, a man alone. All buildings are shut or in ruins, overgrown vegetation, buildings are seemingly excavated by Finch as he goes from one to the other, placing a clear sun on the windows. His existence is seemingly one of isolation, desperation, and survival. Frightened. He's so alone. We follow Finch into what looks like a container where he sheds an hazmat spacesuit and we are led to believe for a moment that this is the extent to which he's to live. However, surprisingly, we're filled with a sign that there is more to Finch's life than a utilitarian survival as we see a living pet dog through a window. We realize that Finch has a vast collection of books and there's a spectacular scene of automatic scanning of books. The scene discloses to us that Finch has not entirely been without company, but has had a wealth of knowledge at his disposal and he has used this to build his own android. If we don't go before that storm hits, we'll die, all of us. As soon as you can walk, we're leaving. After what is quite an amusing scene with the robot trying to learn to walk, we find that Finch is pressed by an incoming storm that is set to wipe out his homestead slash lab and is forced to take steps to preserve the library by scanning them into his new droid. However, that and teaching him how to walk means that they don't have time to scan everything. That's over here. Use your foot up just to here. Perfect. The brand new droid is now embedded with the famous Isaac Asimov's three directives that we've seen in so many movies before. They explore man and robot relationships where they cannot harm human beings under any circumstance or allow a human beings to come to harm by their own actions. However, Finch adds a fourth directive that he must take care of his dog, the only thing that Finch cares about that is living. The film touches on a few themes of isolation which we've seen recently due to COVID-19. There's a hint of alcohol abuse, a serious issue that can affect many people in society and especially the most vulnerable. Finch uses alcohol as a form of medication and what seems to be some form of ailment as he coughs up some blood. From there, Finch plans to journey not east, too many people, but west, to the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. The storm Finch has been expecting arrives, and they swiftly pile into their 1984 Fleetwood RV, which for anyone who loves that type of camping is the ideal yet cutesy American-style camper van fueled, ironically, with solar panels. The droid works out in seconds to get to San Francisco will be 800 miles, and the journey begins. I don't think it likes me. 
We are treated with some advanced sweeping scenery and epic drone shots of beautiful sun-dried mountainous scenery as the journey towards the Golden Gate Bridge. We rejoined what is now a road trip movie with a father and son tale reminiscent of Geppetto from Pinocchio dynamic. And rather than creating his boy and neglectfully letting him disappear on his own treacherous journey, Geppetto, Jiminy Cricket and Pinocchio all jam into a camper van and go looking for signs of real life together. What shall we have? Get your elbows off the table. Finch stops off at the cafe and role plays with his dog, seemingly trying to hold on to social norms like keeping elbows off the table. The droid's inexperience and strong desire to please his father figure now begins to express itself as he takes it upon himself to drive the RV, which leads to continued misunderstanding between the two characters. Do you think we'll make it? However, later, the droid is able to redeem himself as Finch struggles to secure the RV in another storm, as the droid helps Finch keep everyone safe and is easily able to secure the RV. Now, after the storm had subsided and the dust had settled, the droid decides that he will choose his own name, and it's quite an amusing way of subverting expectations as he goes through a number of hilarious options. This scene I actually really enjoyed. Navigating the relationship of trust is a precarious and topsy-turvy thing that Jeff sometimes hilariously and other times dangerously gets wrong. Realising that Finch is ill and needs supplies goes into a building and is delighted to find some medicine. Jeff rehearses the four directives as he gets wrapped up in seemingly realising the fulfilment of these. However, there is a sinister presence and Jeff is not aware of this. But Finch realises that Jeff and Judy are missing from the RV and goes looking for them which results in a catastrophe, which once again threatens Jeff and Finch's trust of each other. The most touching scene in the movie is of Jeff throwing a ball for Goodyear, Finch's beloved dog. Something is so simple and so relatable. It's also hilarious and completely pivots the movie as it deals with mortality and circumstances that cause Jeff to take responsibility. A story that will resonate with many. However, Tom Hanks' portrayal of Finch, not seemingly a person you would expect to have survived 15 years on his own, and is more like an eccentric, wistful Geppetto, while the CG of Jeff and the characterization of a young person coming to groups with being a new robot in a world where he needs to learn how to be what he was designed to do brings you into the character's shared crisis and how they will survive each other and the apocalypse to get to the Golden Gate. This review has been completely filled with spoilers, but I'm going to hold off on spoiling the last 15, 20 minutes of this film. I just wanted to say that I found the first 20 minutes of this movie somewhat eh. It seems to take a while to get into its stride, but once the film gets moving, it draws you in and holds you as you root for and recognise some familiar themes. I would say this is not the most gripping movie, especially of Tom Hanks, but it is a story that tries to speak to its audience with the effects of climate change, which is gaining more and more relevance as we we see wildfires, global warming, floods, which we cannot ignore. I especially enjoyed the passing on or the handing over to the next generation, themes and the struggles and pitfalls of the new generation being entirely enthusiastic about being a proactive and it explores with relative accuracy the distrust and skepticism of the old generations. If this film is somewhat a prediction of the future, well, it looks pretty bleak and it's probably a reason why people are so anxious about the future and whether or not um, man will actually, in the end, destroy the world. However, it is something that we do need to consider about making sure that we don't utterly destroy the world while we're here. Well, this is my first review on this channel, so we need a way to be able to rate the movie. So out of five, we're going to give this a rating of three out of five. Of course, you can only watch this movie if you have the Apple application, but if you do, check the movie out and leave a comment in a section below and tell me what you thought of it. I'll see you next time.